right, here we go. Now, uh, we're going to add fractions. So I'm going to do the odds with you. Occasionally, I might do an even one if I think it's a little bit harder or something different. All right. Now, again, like I said, you guys are fantastic. So you have one less year of experience with fractions. All right. Sometimes that makes it a little bit harder. All right. So today, we're adding and subtracting fractions with integers. That's what makes it more difficult than last year. All right. Last year, we taught how to add and subtract, but we didn't have the positives and negatives. All right. So let's just review real quick. If I were asking you to add 1 15th plus 3 fifths, you have to get a common denominator, which requires me to do what? There you go. That's exactly right. So here's how I want to write it. I want to write 1 15th. Now I like... I think it's important to stack the fractions on top of each other. All right, so I do it like this: one fifteenth plus three fifths. All right. Now we need a common denominator. Does everybody remember the common denominator is fifteen? Is everybody comfortable with that? All right. So now that means I just have to. I'm just going to write the work out this time. All right. I would be multiplying by three, multiplying by three. So that has 1 15th plus 9 15 And you can leave out that step if you want to. All right? You can just get the common denominator if you know that. What? Well, you're going to see why in a few minutes that's not a good idea. All right? You might as well just get in the habit of just going down. All right, if you go side to side, I really don't care. It's just trust me, when you have whole numbers, and fractions going side to side is not the easiest thing, especially when we start subtracting, you have to borrow, and you have to do all that stuff. But it's always easier to go up and down. So now, obviously, the final answer here is what? Beautiful. 10 over 15. And then, of course, we always reduce. We we'll reduce that to what? Yes, 2 over 3. Is everybody happy with that? Does everybody remember? Good times, right? All right, let's check out number two, just for now, all right? Why is this one a little bit different? Because there's positives and what? Negatives. Negatives. Now, we're going to add these, or are we going to subtract them? Okay. Subtract. Just because there's a plus sign doesn't mean adding, right? So, negative five-ninths plus one-sixth. So, what's the common denominator with nine and six? Beautiful, 18. Could you have said 36? Yes. Could you have said 54? But then you're just going to have to reduce. So you always try to find the lowest common denominator. All right? Yes, Marin. So what am I doing now? What's the first fraction going to become? Do you remember? Yes. What type of 10? And then the second fraction would be? Beautiful. 3 over 18. So now it's not really that big of a deal, right? You just have to decide if your answer is positive or negative. Marin, so in this case, it's going to be what? Negative. Negative what? Yes. Negative 7 over 18. All right, is everybody pretty happy with that? Everybody good? All right, so now let's try number three. All right, do I really care about the positive and the negative? No, it should just be what? Negative. negative. All right, so I'm going to write it as 7 eighths minus 2 7. Now, does anybody remember the term relatively prime? Relatively prime, tell me what that means. That's good. Right. That's exactly right. They don't they both they don't have to be prime, they just can't share any factors between themselves. So if they are relatively prime, the quick way is to just multiply the two numbers together. Is everybody with me on that? 
8 and 7 have no common factors. So there's no reason to look for a common denominator. The common denominator is just to do what? Multiply them. All right? So if I can do that, Michaela, what's my common denominator? Beautiful. So 56. I'm going to let you finish off. So what's the first fraction going to be? And the second one? Perfect. What kind of 16? Nothing. Good. So then my final answer is? Mm. Read me the problem real quick. Look up on the board. What does this say? Mm. Read the problem. Mm. Right? Mm. No, not plus. Mm. Yeah, we just want to say 49 minus 16. You see what I'm saying? So what's 49 minus 16? Yes, that's your answer. Right? 33 over 56. Everybody good? Elise, I'll let you do five. Now, hopefully you can understand now why I like to work down the page, all right? It's much easier. And I, someone told me that you may have learned to convert these into improper fractions. Is that correct? Well, we're not doing that. We're not doing that, all right? Just leave them as mixed fractions. It's much easier to add and subtract mixed fractions, all right? So let me show you what I mean by that, just to make sure. I'm going to rewrite it as negative 2 and 1 third minus seven and one half. Okay, Elise, you're up. Are these relatively prime? Yes. yes, because there are no common factors with two and three. So what's the common denominator? Six. Good. So it's going to be negative two and what? Um, two six. Good job. And the second fraction will be? No, wait, what? Three and six. I know what you mean. It's okay. It's all right. Now, first of all, before you ask, anybody have any questions with that so far? What? Why did you do two times three? I'm getting a common denominator, right? Yeah. So I multiplied. Oh. oh, I thought we were talking about the oh. Everything's good oh. now. All right, Elise, go ahead. Um, are we adding or subtracting? Subtracting. Tell me what the answer is. So, negative 9. There you go. And, um, no, no, that's what I'm saying. Are we adding or subtracting them? We're adding them. Now listen to me. So I want to I make sure this is a negative and that's a negative. So if they're oh, both... So no. Wait, what? If they're both negative, do we add or do we subtract? You're right. You're adding them. This is why it's confusing. So I'm, I'm trying to tell you guys, please slow down. Please listen to what I'm saying. All right? It's not important to be the first one done again. The, there's details that you're going to miss, all right, if you're going too fast. All right? So it's just like negative 2 minus 7. All right? That's negative 9, all right? Now, listen, I'm going to say something important, so I need everybody to hear me. Are these fractions positive or negative? Mm -hmm. They are negative also. This is like the number negative 2 and negative 2 over 6. Negative 7 and negative 3. We just don't write that, though. Let me hear me on that. That's important. All right? If the whole number is negative, then the fraction is negative. All right. So now it's going to be negative 9 and what, kiddo? And 5. Yes, now you're in the game. Negative 9 and 5, 6. Everybody happy with that? Remember, you should be trying it yourself and then make some adjustments. Hear me, what I'm saying. All right? Some of you guys are going to get a not very good grade on your homework because you're not showing enough work. You're just telling me what the answer is. That's never good enough, ever. I'm doing all of this work. I expect you to have at least what I have written down. All right? And some of you guys are getting too sloppy 
all right? You're not making progress, right? I want neater. That's why you skip lines. And everybody in here can say, well, you don't have the neatest handwriting. You're right, I don't. But everything's in nice block letters. I feel like everybody can see everything perfectly. All right? That's what I'm expecting out of your paper. All right? Or it will be shredded. All right, here we go. Find number seven. All right. Seven. I know I did two. I said I'm going to do an odd, or sometimes I'm going to do an even. All right, I know. You don't have to tell me. All right. So, Ben, what do I do? Are these relatively prime? So, what's the common denominator? Okay, so the first fraction would be. What type? That's right. What type? Can I leave it like that? Yes, you can. Improper fractions are perfect. Negative 37 out of 36. Good job, actually. All right, Mr. Mead, go. Common denominator. Oh. Are these, oh. first of all, are these relatively prime? No. No, so you can't multiply them together. So what's the common denominator? That would be 24. You're awesome. 24, 24. So the top fraction would be? Um, that would be top fraction 15. The bottom fraction? 14. What type? Negative 14. Final answer? Would be one of the 24. Yes, I'm happy. Good job. Very good. Very good. All right. Speak up now. A little bit harder as we go. A little bit harder. We're just going to go right down the rows. Everybody's going to have a shot today. I want to see where you're at. All right. Uh-oh. Number 11. Lucas, what do I have to do on this one? That's right. Five and five, six, plus two and one fourth. Are these relatively prime? Mm -hmm. No. What's the common denominator? Two. What's the common denominator again? Two. That's a common factor. Oh. Um, Twelve. Twelve. So the top fraction becomes what? That becomes ten three And the denominator becomes? So if I add them together, what? What about the 5 and the 2? Thank you. 7 and 13 over 12. Now, is that okay to leave it like that? No. All right? You're not allowed to leave it improper and a mix. So what's the final answer? 8 and 1 12th. Now, does anybody have a question with why it's 8 and 1 12th? Anybody have a question with why it's 8 and 1 12th? What? Okay. So basically, Dylan is H. What? Come on. H and like you can't have an improper fraction. Right. Like that's what we said. You can't have an improper fraction with a mixed number. All right. Can't do that. Yes. I don't like that. Can you say that? This is an improper fraction. Do you agree with that? Right. You can't have an improper fraction with a mixed fraction. You hear me? Makes sense now, right? You sure? All right. Thank you. What? Good. All right. 11. No. Uh, 15. All right, so again, I like to rewrite it. All right, so I'm going to say 5 sevenths, and then what? Minus 10 over 21. All right, where are we at? Yeah, there you go. Tell me, what's are these relatively prime? Yeah. 
does a factor of seven go into, you see what I'm saying now, right? They're not relatively prime, and it's okay, because that's we don't use that term very much. I'm just trying to show kids that if they're not relatively prime, you don't multiply them together. All right, so what's the common denominator? 21, that's perfect. Shh. So what's the top fraction going to be? You're awesome. And the bottom fraction stays? Yeah. All right. So now tell me what the answer is. You are amazing. 5 over 21. Is everybody happy with that? Very happy what? And this is an improper fraction. So you just leave it as an Leave it as an improper fraction. But you can't have an improper fraction with a mixed fraction. Though. I said that. All right. All right. Next. Let's try 17. All right. I'm listening. Minus 10 over 11. Right. Are these relatively prime? Yes. So the denominator is? Three. Look how easy that is. Good job. So the top fraction is? Um, 11. What type? Negative 11. And the bottom fraction is? Negative 3. Good job. So your final answer? You are amazing. That's a good job. Very good. All right. Is everybody with me on this, right? Everybody's feeling good? All right. 19. All right. Okay. Okay. So, like, one six, um, minus five. Are they relatively prime? No. Yes. They are. All right. Six is not prime. The 6 and 7 have no common factors. That's why they say relative. Okay? Now what? Common denominator. Right? Bottom one would be? That's right. So now your final answer for me. You're awesome. Look at that. Good job. All right. Who's next? All right, me. You're up. What's common denominator and are they relatively prime? Um, they are relatively prime. Why do you think that? Because 10 can't go into 15. But that's not what it means. Relatively prime means they don't share a common factor. So are they relatively prime? No, no they are not because they share what factor? Five. You're awesome. Now what's common denominator? 30. 30 it is. All right. So what's the top fraction? And four. Final answer. I said, what's the final answer? Negative nine. Seven or Why do you say that? Because negative nine minus a negative. No, it's not. We never do no, we never do double signs. It's just a negative nine and a negative two. Where do you see double signs at? Oh, I thought I said double signs. No, never. I'll never write double signs down unless I'm just writing the original. Uh, so what is it? Negative 11 over 10. Yes, that is correct. Uh, what do you think it is? That's okay. So let's say you forget. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. 15, 30, 45, 60. Another common one is 60, right? Remember this now? 
And it's okay to say no. Right? It's been a long time. It's been a long time. I totally agree. So you're looking for the like, least common multiple. All right? And you know what multiple is, like the multiples of 5, 5, 10, 15, right? We did the multiples of 10 and the multiples of 15. And then we found the smallest one. All right? So I have negative 11 over 30. Yes, ma'am. Are they even homework with the odds? Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, no, I, and that's what I'm saying. I, I don't, I'm, just be organized. I don't care. I, I don't really, know. as long as you do your homework, I don't care what order you finish. All right, it doesn't matter to me. All right, I know you all are being a good student. All right, the important part is that you're writing neater, organized, so I can read it. That's what I'm working on. All right, if you got the number next to the problem, I can fix it. Okay, so here we go, 23 now. I've already forgot where are we at. Oh, yeah. We don't have 23. It was a word problem. 25. Did you just go? Okay. No, Jackson. So we're coming up this way? All right, you're up. Come on, let's go. Are they relatively prime? So what's common denominator? Right, so that's going to be... Right. So your final answer. And that's perfect right there. Now we're going to fix it, but I'm just saying, all right, that's a great job. All right, now fix it to become. You're amazing. That's exactly right, guys. 12 and 3 tenths. You might need me to go over that. All right, just in time. All right, 27, here we go. Yeah, what's, are they relatively prime? No. So, what's the common denominator? Nope. 12 is a common denominator, but it's the lowest one. Oh, six. Six, yes, very good. So, the top fraction can stay. And the bottom fraction becomes what? That's correct. And so what is this going to be? Which is the same as? Yes. Come on, guys. Everybody happy with that? Yeah, because you had to reduce. Right? It's not a big deal. All right, let's find 29. All right, James. Okay. Um, so they are not relatively high? That's correct. And so, you change it, it three into a nine. That's correct. So, what would that be? And so, um, six of nine. That is correct. And then you would give it, um, it would be 11, negative 11, and negative 7 over 9. But we wouldn't say negative, right? Yes. You know that's correct. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so I want to do, yeah, we got time. Chloe, you're up, 31. Is it relatively prime, yes or no? 
Why do you think it is relatively prime? Yeah, it's definitely not relatively prime, right? Because it shares a common factor. No. Because two is a common factor of 16 and six. You are amazing, girl. 48. Mm -hmm. How many? So when you add them, You are amazing, kiddo. That's a good job. Good mental math. Good job. All right, now please, guys, let, let's talk about that. If, if you're not sure, don't sit there. All right, please don't sit there. What? Okay, well, let's look at, make sure 31 is good. Everybody good with 31? Anybody have any questions? That's good if you know that. You all right? I'm just having so much fun. Yeah. Okay. Let's go back to 27. How's that for you, buddy? I just didn't get a chance to write that much. All right. Which brings me to 33. All right, here we go. 33, where are we at? You're awesome. Mm -hmm. That is really good. Really good, guys. All right. 35. No, 35. Now, um, 41, I need everybody to put a star on 41. Everybody put a star on 41. I think you have to borrow in this one. I think you have to borrow, which is troubling. All right. Does anybody remember how to borrow? All right. Let me just review borrowing real quick. All right. So if I said to you four and one half, no, I'm going to make it easier. Four and three eighths minus two and seven eighths. Look up, please. Can I do the subtraction here? No. Nope. So we had to borrow, right? So I borrowed. One from the four and made that a what? Three. three. Now, what did the three become? An eleven. An eleven. Three plus three. Remember that? Because you're adding one, right? And one is the same as eight over eight, so three plus eight is eleven. Now, of course, the quick way is to just tell kids if you ever borrow, you just add the numerator and denominator. Okay? Mm -hmm. You add the numerator and denominator. All right, so you got to pay attention now because it's a little bit tough. But Harrison's going to lead us through this one. All right, 41. All right, so I'm going to put negative 19 and 3 eighths plus 4 and 3 fourths. Okay, so what do I get for a common denominator, Harrison? So now what? That's right. So what do I have to do? Borrow from the what? And that becomes a? 
My final answer is 14. what type of 14? If you understand that, you are in fantastic shape. Fantastic shape. If you don't, we got to talk. And obviously, we're talking. Go. I'm not sure what that means. You have to borrow when you're subtracting the numbers. And the numerator in the first fraction is smaller than the second fraction. And I know what you're saying. Shh. Listen, I know what you're saying. Can't we just do it negative? Right? No. The reason why we can't do it negative, come on now, I need you to look up here so I can show you. The reason why I can't do it negative is because you're subtracting them, right? So I'm looking at it from this perspective. And I'm going to show you what I mean. I'm going to try to make an easier problem, okay? So let's say if I ask you to do 1 and let's say... Um, Let's say I said one and one tenth, no, one and seven tenths minus three and uh, three tenths. You with me on this? Yeah. Now, now before you write anything down, I just want you to listen. All right. I know. I know. Sometimes you're very good, but I, I think sometimes it's easier just to listen. Okay. And this is the time where I really think it's easier just to listen to me. Now, would you say I have to add those or subtract them? That's exactly right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to show you a visual about why we have to do this, okay? So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make red. One, two, three, and then I'm just going to draw this. One, two, three. It's not very good, but you'll get the point. This right here represents negative 3 and 3 tenths. Do you agree? Now, the reason why I did that is because I just want you to visualize red means what? Negative, right? And then I have to do 1 and 7 tenths, right? So what I want to do is I'm going to change this to a positive, just so you can see this would be 1. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to draw this stack again except I'm going to come up here and say this represents 7 out of 10, and this represents 3 out of 10. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. You with me? All right. So let's say you have, um, let's say you have this situation right here. What you're trying to do is you're trying to, can you see how these two cancel each other out? Because one is what? Positive. And one is what? Negative. Does that make sense? You with me or not? All right. So now I get to the seven tenths. Right. So try, try to listen. I know. Concentrate with me. I can only take away how many of them. There's three tenths here. Do you agree? So I can take away these three tenths. And then if I take away three tenths over here, that would make four tenths left. Do you agree? Right? So now I have to take away another four tenths. Right? So that means I have to convert these into ten out of ten. Which means there's going to be six out of ten left. So the answer is negative one and six tenths. All right? Now, I'm not sure I did a very good job explaining that, so I'll try one more time now just with the whole numbers, all right? Because my drawing may not have been the best visual. But let me try to explain it. Do you have to add these or subtract them? So if you have to subtract them, I always tell kids, put the largest whole number on top. Do you agree? And now we're going to subtract. So if I subtract these... Can I do 3 minus 7? No, because why? There's still more positives, right? So I can pull from this 3 and make it a 2 and make that a 13. 
You hear this? The 3, when I add those together, that becomes a 13. Now I can subtract them. And remember what I said, the answer was 6 over 10, 1 and 6 over 10. But the answer is supposed to be negative, though, because why? Because you had originally more negatives than positives, right? So again, I'm, I'm totally understanding. That's why tomorrow I'm going to have about six or seven more problems with just borrowing on So I can, I, can, I can review that skill. To me, that's the only thing that's really hard for kids when you're borrowing with positives and negatives. Because sometimes it, it seems like now, listen, we have been taught, come on now, don't, don't close up on me yet. All right, listen to what I'm saying because it's important. So if I say to you 4 minus 6, you should be able to say, well, that's just what? <laughs> Negative 2, right? But then when you talk to me about fractions, that's, it's not that simple. You with me? Because why? Because the whole numbers mean that there are more parts. If I have, for example, uh, one third here and I have to borrow, then I can make this out of thirds, right? So now I have not just one third, I could say that's four thirds. Hopefully I'm making sense. But like I said, we're gonna to practice more tomorrow. And I really want it to make sense. I don't want you to just try to memorize what I'm saying. I want you to try to understand the numbers, right? And that's why I say this is the only one that's hard is borrowing for you guys. Borrowing with positives and negatives sometimes can be tricky. It's obviously even tricky for me to explain, but I'm gonna do better tomorrow. What? Yeah, yeah, but you have to remember now. Listen, I want everybody to hear me. Listen, 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 because I think this is helpful, what you just said. This 3 eighths, is this 3 eighths right here, is that positive 3 eighths or negative 3 eighths? That's why. So that's also negative. So it's like this. You have negative 19 and 3 eighths. That's negative. So then if you add another negative 1 to it, that makes it negative 18 and negative 11 eighths. All right, like I said, please don't worry about it. There's only one problem out of today. Tomorrow I already made the worksheet up. It's sitting right on my desk, and I have about 5 or 10 where you have to borrow. Okay, that's the only thing that's tricky. And I wish in this section they would have done more practice of that. All right, so um, the bell's getting ready to ring. Um, listen, I want to jump down just for a quick second to remind you, like on 45, I want everybody in here to know that 56 repeating is what fraction? Yeah, you should know 56 over 99 and point one repeating is just what? Yeah, don't be confused by those, you with me, decimals. All right, convert them to fractions. Now, you don't have to do any more odds. You only have to do the what? Even. You only have to do the evens. All right? Don't do any more of the odds. Just do the what? I'm not sure what you're talking about. You only got the 17. I've already done all of the odds on the board. What do you mean you only got the 17? What are you talking about? As I'm doing the problems, you're not supposed to be daydreaming. You're supposed to be working the problems with me. Now you got all those odds and the evens to do. Now you're gonna have at least an hour's worth of homework tonight. That would be like five minutes. Five minutes, okay. I'm gonna talk about I'll time it, I'll time it. How do you put we don't have to do um forty three forty five? Even. Everybody has to do the evens except Aiden. 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 Wait, so I forgot Wait, to uh, I forgot to uh, put the number in it. No, I just I already just Stop talking, remember? So can I just